Oh, hello, hello, YouTube. It's Mary once again. I haven't made a video in a while. I haven't been feeling real well. I've been, you know, um, what is it called? Arthritis. That's what, oh, this week was terrible. My, uh, left leg, my left knee swole up so big, and it's been doing that. It started Friday, Thursday night, and I know what it can lead to, and I called my doctor's office and asked her, could she give me a steroid shot, because that's what she, she tells me to do. She said, Miss Charles, rather than go to the uh, emergency room, just call me, and you can come in, and I can give you a steroid shot to scave off the pain and keep you from having an MS exacerbation. So I did that. I, fr I called Friday because, oh, man, it was bad. And I could tell I was having an exacerbation because you, you get these strange pains in different parts of your body and your nerves feel like you're burning. This is, I know I know I've had it long enough to know when I'm about to have an exacerbation. So I did what my doctor asked me to do and called the office and they says, well, Miss Charles, we don't have any appointments available. So you need to go to the emergency room and let them see you. I said, but uh, Dr. Perry told me to come in and just get a shot to keep him going to the emergency room and panic copay. Well, she doesn't have any openings. So if you could uh, go to the emergency room and then come see us Monday, I was hurting so bad, so bad. I call my son-in-law and say, baby, you're going to have to come take me to the emergency room because I know it's going to be a long weekend with this pain. So we went. I wasn't there for three hours. I was glad of that. But they didn't give me anything that I didn't already have that I wasn't already taking. And they prescribed some of these little old lidocaine patches. And I'm, I'm wearing fentanyl and buprofenol patches, so... I knew the insurance wasn't going to pay for that. You already on pain patches. So I'll come on home. And you talk about pain this weekend. Oh, my God. It hurts so bad. I actually cried. Just, oh. And then I told my son, I said, it's Monday. I'm going to, I can't do this. And I know what it's going. I'm going to, to an MS exacerbation. And it could last sometime a month if you don't take care of it. And if, if it gets that bad, they have to give you these, uh, run IVs through your body for two and three hours. And I don't like that. So I called the doctor again today, Monday. And the lady said, well, Miss, Miss Charles, we still don't have any openings, but, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I see an opening. We have a cancellation and you can come in at 1130. I said, okay, I will be there. So I got my sister to drop me off. We get there. I do see the doctor. And when I told her what the conversation was about Friday with her, whoever answered the phone, because it wasn't a nurse, she was livid. She said, I'm going to listen to the recordings and see who talked to you, because this is not our protocol. I said, well, I, I know you told me not to call the emergency, go to the emergency room unless it's an emergency. And I was not having an emergency. But I knew I was going to be hurting. And she said, I told them that. She, she said she was going to listen back, listen to it and take care of it. They gave me a strong steroid shot and the steroid pack. And I'm able to walk just a little bit without limping. You know how sometimes you have to uh, make your legs stiff, stiff like a Chester on a, a gun smoke? And it's so funny about that. I'm remembering how I was telling my friend Harold. We talk and laugh all the time. But I was telling him, I I, I was telling him, I, I asked him, how, does, does Chester really, is his leg really messed up if he's acting that part? Because he plays it well. And Harold told me, he said he probably has a brace on so he could keep a stiff leg. So we laughed. But little did I know, a day later, I was going to be walking around stiff leg just like Chester. I say, well, you got to be careful with what you questions you ask and making assumptions about stuff because I was just like Chester was. 
but the shot has helped a, a little bit. But the only thing I don't like is how the steroids make me feel. I, I can't sleep. And it makes me angry. I get I get mad real quick. I get upset and just stupidity. And people who are seriously stupid, they get on my nerves at that time. And so this evening, this girl, she she called. She's one of these Christian zealots who just wants to convert the whole world. And she know how I feel. She knows how I feel about Christianity and the Bible and all that, but she she, she does it. She, and she'll call me once a week, and I can feel her leading. She has these leading questions. And I, when I'm not on steroids, I can avoid that and say, well, Gary, you know, it's been nice. I got something else to do, blah, blah, blah. But to, tonight I fell for the, the okie doke. And I... She questions me about what I believe. Mary, so you don't believe in the Bible. I said, what do you want me to believe about it? But do you believe it's the word of God? I say, a man wrote it. I know a man wrote it. God didn't write it. Oh, so you don't believe in the Bible. Oh, you don't be, do you believe in God? I said, no, I don't even believe in God. I know God because I know me. And so she she had to take a deep breath off of that one. She said, well, I can't know God until I believe him. I said, well, that's the way you do it. Some people put the cart before the horse and some people put it after. But I have to know. And that's what I base almost everything that I do on knowing. And there's a lot of things. There's very few things we can do without knowing. I've had to go and had, I've had about, I know 12 surgeries. I had to believe what the doctor said. I didn't know, but I had to believe it. So you put your, your trust in these doctors, and a lot of people don't make it out. Doctors make mistakes. So she says, well, God don't make no mistakes, and God made man, and God blah, blah, blah. I said, that's what they say. But I told her, I said, one thing you do not know how to do you don't have a logical mind, and you do not know how to debate. I said, because you only one thing, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. God, 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 God said. I said, I said I'm going to ask you a question. It took, I don't know how long to get her to shut up, to listen to what I had to ask her. I said, there are some lies in the Bible, according to the way I think. She said, name one, you can't name it. I said, well, take this story of Jacob and Esau. Uh, Rebecca, I forget what it, I think that was her mother, but she was pregnant with twin boys. And the first baby was being born. Esau, he's already out of the womb. His head is out of the womb. If a baby's hand is out of the womb, you better believe his head is out too. The nursemaid tied up. A red string around his arm so she'd know what baby was first. I said, didn't that happen? She said, yeah, that's what the Bible said. I said, so somehow or another, Jacob is still in the womb. And he managed to pull Esau's leg, drag him eight or nine inches, however long Rebecca's vagina was. We we'll say, we we'll say six inches, drag this baby back in the womb, switch places with him. He goes down the birth canal and comes out first. And I said, is that a lie or is that the truth? If the Bible said it, it's the truth. I said, no, don't even put the Bible in it. Is this a true story? Well, yeah, because it's, it's in the Bible. I said, well, we might well believe about Hercules being eaten by Zeus and he ate all these babies every night and and his wife would, would put the babies up there. We might well believe all these fables then. But now, you don't understand. I said, well, I'm, I'm trying to have a decent debate with you about what's logical. I said, now, that's it's so many lies. And I'm saying this word lies because it's not true. In the Bible, that did not happen. He said, well, God made the womb. He made a woman. I said, but God ain't never made a womb big enough, ain't never made a newborn baby strong enough to pull the twin 
brother back up in the womb and switch places. That, that That's a lie. And before I knew it, I that stereo was kicking in. I said, God, dog, this is a trick of the enemy. And my God has told me not to. It's time to hang up the phone, Mary. Because then she said, well, in the beginning, Jesus was with God. Because in the Bible, it says that uh, God said, let us make man in our image. He was talking to Jesus. I say he's in the, if you get the original text in the Hebrew text, it said Elohim. That means God's. Well, now I'm going by the King James Bible. I said, yeah, you're going to be eternally lost and confused if you're going by what King James wrote. Because King James, they left out so many books of the Bible. If you got gall enough to believe what King James wrote, then go read another book. Go read uh, the uh, story of the Epic of Gilgamesh. Read some more stuff. Add to your repertoire. Now, I believe, I said, well, then just believe that. But don't be trying to badger people and get them to believe what you believe. I said, baby, I've been there. I got the T-shirts. I preach that stuff. So go, go. Don't be scared. You're scared. Because you know you're going to have to face this. And a lot of people are afraid. If Christianity fails them, if the Bible fails them, they're going to go do some dope. They're going to go do this. They're going to be the worst sinner in the world. Because they don't know how to stand. They never met their God or their goddess. I met my goddess. And I've told y'all this. And this, this is steroids doing me like this. Because, shit, I may not even be able to. I'm taking my sleeping pills, but. What they gave me, she told me she was going to give me a, an extra dose of steroids. And I felt that stuff burning. It took forever for her to in, empty that uh, that vial of the shot. So, but I'm going to talk. I'm going to try to be calm. Because I don't want nobody following me under pretense thinking that I'm just this devout Christian. And I'm walking down this road. And I'm not that person. I'm not. I know my God. I know my goddess. And I, I tell y'all all the time. Well, not all the time. I've told you before. I knew my God when I was young. And in my dreams, I had vivid dreams when I was a kid. And just it was just so much fun. I loved to go to sleep because I could be with my God. But in the third grade, my God has talked to me and and talked to me in just a common voice, but it was a woman's voice. And everything this God has said happened just like she said it. And it happened all the time. And I didn't realize that this voice was my voice until we had enough money to buy one new plain old tape recorder. You press play, play and pause at the same time. And everybody was playing with us. My time to talk, and I heard my voice. And I says, "Play it back, play it back." And my brother played it back. And I didn't tell him that I knew who that was. But I said, "God, that's that lady." I'm like 16 when I he hear this my own voice. And I said, "That's the same lady that was talking to me when I was in the third grade. How can this be?" What is this? I didn't tell nobody in my family. But when they left and went to church and did whatever they had to do, I constantly replayed this recording. And I said, this been my voice talking to me all this time? What is this? And I went on through life, sadness, heartaches. My mother died. In the church, I saw a whole bunch of bullshit that they were doing. And I was a really lost soul because I put my trust in man and the God that they yap yap to me about. And in my own heart, I said, they don't know about the God that I hear. But I didn't tell them. I didn't. I said, well, maybe they got their own voice that they hear. But as I got older, married and married uh, the devil's son oh, that's what he was because i put too much faith in this man i did i did I, I just married him and and forgive forgive take me back 
I can't even count the times I did it. But when I finally woke up and said, you know what? This voice, this friend has been with me all this time. It never left me. I hear the voice that wakes me up in the middle of the night, 3 o'clock in the morning, and talk to me and tell me what's going to happen. Come to me in my dreams. I said, I got enough. I don't have to worry. I don't have to run behind a man or behind a church or a preacher. I said, I got all that I need. And so I cut the man, the church, and I said, just me and you, goddess, me and you, Mary, me, myself, and I. I'm walking because I know, I don't have to believe, I know where I've been, and I know Mary and Layla, whatever has been with me all this time. So I'm I'm not that Christian woman. I was, let me move this a little bit closer. I was that Christian woman, but I'm the healed woman right now. And the steroids, uh, I'm feeling better, and I'm calming down as I talk, and I hope I have a a good night's nice sleep. And I will. I don't have to hope. I know I will because I got to pee a little do that too. <laughs> so, but I just had to get this off my chest. I did send this lady an email because when we're talking, she is loud and she out talks you. So, but she she's a pilot parrot. And a pilot parrot, she only knows a few scriptures. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God, God, God. That she she repeats what she's heard. And so when I was telling her about Jacob and Esau, and I told her some more story, she ain't never read none of that. She she remembers what she hears. So that woman had just really, you know, got me upset. And I should have listened to the goddess because God has told me. She said, the, <laughs> me, Mary told me. And when I get through talking to her, my God tells me, did you see how she was trying to lead you down that path? I say, yeah. And, I, and this is how I talk to my God. I say, yeah, I wonder why, why did she do that? She, the voice told me, she wants to know the truth. But she don't want to know it the way you want her to know it. She's going to have to. You can't take the Bible and God away from a Christian and not give them something tangible. You got to give them something else because they don't know who they are. They don't know that they are the God that they seek. So when you snatch that away from them, the uh, the floor is going to fall off money and they're going to be lost. They're going to fall in the water just like Peter did. So I, I talked to God, I said, well, why does she keep bothering me? We can have a nice conversation about the birds and bees and books and, and not books, but she asked me how do I write books and blah. We have a decent conversation. She always go out the back door and come back in. Well, you know, you need to uh, believe in God and the Bible. I said, oh, God, here we go again. But I did send her a, a pretty long text message because that's the only way I could speak what was on my heart without being interrupted and screamed at with these scriptures she throwing at you. And uh, she might not even read, but I did uh, send it to her. But she's the type of woman who will go to another Christian and show this text message to them. And she wants to be comforted by what they say. She wants people to sound and agree with her, sound just like her. So I know exactly what she's going to do. And it's funny how it comes with age where you know what people are doing and you know the exact move that they're going to do. And you have to, it's not like I'm trying to be smarter or win a debate, not trying to win a debate, but I just need to know what you set me up for and she does she tries to do it every time but like i said the steroids tonight i went for the bullshit tonight and i i i knew that's what i was gonna do and steroids make me do like that it does and and ain't nothing you can do about a lot of people steroids do a lot of people like that and 
I guess you just have to, the people who are around you will have to know because, man, one time after my son died, I was in pain. I was having a, a MS exacerbation because of the stress of his death. I was, I was bad. They gave me a whole lot of steroids and a lot of other stuff. But his wife, my daughter-in-law, I had made, uh, what was it? Rice. I used to make rice uh, pods with my socks and sew it up on the sewing machine and use them as heating pads. So I was hurting so bad this night. So I put it in the microwave and I forgot about it and burned it up. Do you know this girl? This I say girl because I'm old enough to be her mother. She's in her 30s and my son was in his 40s. So she got to yelling at me and talking about it. I could set the house afire and blah, blah, blah. And before I knew it, I cussed this girl out till I could not breathe. She goes on to say that she uh, has been putting out fires. She's been a fireman since she was, uh, no, she's been a fireman for over 10 years. And before I know it, I said, bitch, you ain't but 30 something years old. So when did you graduate from school? The thing, it exploded. I opened up the, I live in an apartment. I opened up the front door. I opened up the back door, the patio, and I stood on the porch. It was late at night. I stood out there and cussed and cussed and told her to get her blankety blank, blank, blank out of my house. I don't give up. And I, I it's, I'm glad God didn't come get me at that time because if it was a hell below, I sure was going to go. And I was going to try to drag her with me. That's just how angry I was. My son is dead. Your husband. And I, I don't know nothing about you, but you're going to come tell, ooh, let me get off of that. There's some steroids on it. But I act like that when, I, when I'm under that, that medicine. And they, it can, you can say demons get in the medicine or whatever, but the steroids, it's got to be, if you already got some evil, we all got evil. But honey, I, ooh. And that night, she stayed. I told us you you can stay here tonight, but you can get your ass out of here in the morning. And that night she called my my son, the youngest one that was there, and pleaded with him to talk to me. My son said, "Baby, you don't know my mom. She ain't when she say your ass got to go, you got to go, and ain't no changing her mind." And she did leave, but she never came back. But I apologized to her, and I said, "By you being a paramedic, you should know." that the steroids had me like that, but you had no business coming to an adult, a grown old lady, and tell, fuss at her about burning her, up her own microwave. You didn't buy the damn microwave. I bought it. If I want to burn it up, it's me, myself, and I that's going to burn it up. You keep your mouth shut. So, I don't know if whoever else, if steroids make you like that, but I'm, I'm what, 23 minutes, and, and like I say, I'm not angry with people who who subscribe to my channel thinking I'm this uh, glory hallelujah Christian, because when you subscribe to my channel, you get, need to get to know me, and I'm not a witch, they said I'm a witch, but I guess, if, you know, if you want to call me a witch, you can call me a witch, a bitch, a hitch, or whatever, but I am a different person and not like everybody else and nobody is like each other and which is not a bad word it's just a wise woman and i helped a, a girl write a book that says all women are witches and because we have the power that god gave us and life comes to a woman and when when a baby is born do you know his who his first God is, is his mother. His mother has the power to choke the shit out of him and she don't like it. She has the power. The dad is gone on making more babies. He don't, don't even know what the baby's name is, but the woman is your God. Your mother is your first God until you learn who your God is. So, respect your mother. And uh, you, you men folk that want to be preachers and do all this stuff in the pool pit and talk about God. You need to know yourself before you even think about knowing, talking about God. A lot of men want to uh, uh, be a preacher and 
teach the Bible. If you're going to teach this book, you need to know it. And you need to know it compared to other books. You need to study to show yourself approved. You just can't grab one book and go out and try to convert people to stuff. Because a lot of people are going to be thoroughly disappointed in the end. Make sure it's not you. Because a lot of people have been bamboozled and fooled. And I'm up at 25 minutes. And I'm cooling off. But that girl really... Oh, she really rattled my cage tonight, but I, I'm better. But I, I did tell her in the email that we will never, ever talk about God or the Bible again because I know the game she plays. She has this thing that she, a lot of people are like that. I'm on the battlefield and I'm this, because I used to do that. We would go out and try to convert people and, and you get your Jehovah Witnesses, they had to convert people to, to get their own seat in heaven. So maybe a lot of Christians think that's how they going to be saved. I got uh, I got another crown and uh, a star in my crown because I got this man saved. I converted. You ain't did nothing. You ain't converted nobody. You ain't had that kind of power. Don't even save your own damn self. That's what, uh, if you want to know what the so-called Jesus said, the Bible says, he said, save yourself from this untoward generation. So you save yourself before you have trade save somebody else. And tell the truth. Tell the truth. There's so many people lie. I mean, liars. And I guess that's why in the Bible, whoever wrote that, they must have been lied to because uh, uh, when it said God wouldn't tarry a liar in his sight. Because a liar go tell God a lie. And thank God I don't know no better. I know this man, he's just a, a liar from I don't know where. And I I put it in on Facebook and I wrote about it. And I talk about how I couldn't stand a liar. I said the first person who comment to this in a negative way, you know I'm talking about you because you the liar I'm talking about. Do you know this fool that I was talking about? He sure was the first one. Well, I hope you're not talking about me. And I just said, look at that, look at that, look at him. I called his old lying ass out. Cause he just a liar, and some people they lie, and they'll say, "Well, we're not gonna split hairs over there because it ain't that big of a deal." But it's not true, so it's a lie. If you say it's it's fifty eleven dozen things, and when it ain't but nine, you lying, and you know it's not that many. Some people lie, and they can't help it. But I don't know, and just be aware that people are lying and. They lie for different reasons to make you buy more, do this. And you look at all these commercials. This, uh, I had bought this stuff about, oh, it's come from the pristine waters from New Zealand. You take these little uh, omega-3 capsules. And I bought this stuff. I said, I'm tired of arthritis and stuff. And I bought it. This stuff don't work. It does not work. But they got all these actors and they... And by this, these people are getting paid. So commercials are lies. And half the time the news is lies because people want you to think a certain way. So beware of that. And then the main thing is if you are a liar, correct your ways because I was a liar. And we did that, kids. Uh, when I was a kid, me and my sister, and I was the one instigating this stuff, I would... I say at night, I said, Kathy, we're going to do this. We're going to tell Berta May. That was our little friend. We're going to tell Berta May that we got this cousin. They rich, and they coming to visit us and be this. And then we're going to tell her that we want a million dollars. Because during that time, it was this program used to come on, The Millionaire. Oh, was, was ages ago. The Millionaire would come and give random people a million dollars. So I said, we're going to tell her that we got a million dollars. The Millionaire came through the project. And... I hadn't talked to Britta May in years. We were old. And she said, Mary, you used to tell me all these stories, and I believed them. And I told my mother that Mary, Mary said that they won a million dollars from the millionaire man. And she said, Mama told me that Mary is lying. Because if they won a million dollars, they would still be living in the project. But Britta May said, I believe Mary. 
And when she told me this, I'm I'm I'm, I'm in my forties or fifties when she come back and tell me what her mother said about me lying like that. I felt so bad, and then I I put the the uh, magnifying glass on myself, my soul. I said, "How many more lies have I told?" And then I examined myself, because a lot of people say, "Search me, search me, Lord, if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and straighten me." God ain't gonna do that. You're gonna have to do it. You put the magnifying glass on your ass, and then you see how many lies you've been told. I put that on that on myself and I said God and I examined myself in my business practice my upholstery business and I was walking a straight path with that because I knew if you lying about what you can perform and how good your company is and whatever you do that comes back and people will tell the truth about your uh, ethics so I never did do that. I said, well, at least I stopped lying when I got to be a grown woman. And I still consider that possibility because the more you talk, the more you can open that gate up to lie. So I've been talking 31 minutes and 14 seconds. So that opportunity is still always there for a lie to seep in. And a lot of times we won't say the devil made me do it. No, you made yourself do it. We're going to be surprised. No, we're going to be surprised that the devil is us. We are the devil. I wrote a book. Ain't no, nobody's here but us looking for God in all the wrong places. Go buy that book. It's on Amazon. I'd rather for you to buy it than that. You can check it out at the library, but I don't make any money <laughs> when you check it out at the library. But... I was happy that it did make the library space. But check, buy this book. Nobody's here but us looking for God in all the wrong places. It's on Amazon. Look up Mary E. Sims. But that book and the, the very first book that takes uh, president over the Bible is, and my, for me, is uh, The Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz is the greatest story that was ever told. The munchkins, that's the little people, the sheep of people, the little. And they, they use that kind of like a uh, parable or whatever. But these are the small people. They believed in this God, the Wizard of Oz. And so the people, the small-minded people are the ones that's looking for the God, the Wizard of Oz. And here comes the, the dog, Toto. He, the dog, the one that ain't nobody. The dog goes and pulls the curtain back and say, look at this, what y'all calling God. The Wizard of Oz. He can do this. He can do this. This is nothing but a, a, a man fooling the people. And, and Dorothy, she had everything she needed. All she had to do was click her, her heels and say, there's no place like home. And then the lion and the tin man and the scared lion, all they had to do was write it down. You write your own ticket because when you write the word, you speak it, then you write it. It becomes real. He going to write, I'm not afraid. I get me a heart. I get me this. So you get whatever you want with your own words. So be your own self, God, and write what you 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 God made you this way, and you were made this way. And it's, I'm not saying that you disrespect the God that you have found, but you walk with this God. And you don't need to have a whole bunch of people walking on this path with you. The straight and narrow path. It's narrow because ain't enough room for a whole lot of people to be on it. Just enough room for me, myself, and I. And then God, that's four. Ain't that kind of like big be on that path. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here because uh, I'm going to take this sleep deal. I ain't going to be up night uh, all night. But y'all think about me because I'm on, I'm on the next thing I'm going to be taking in the morning. I'm going to start the steroid pack. And it's more milligrams than what I've taken in a pack. And I just didn't want to do that uh, running the IV for three hours. But. I'm going to take my sleeping pills and calm down because uh, my blood pressure was up from talking to this girl, but it wasn't my 
my heart rate was up. The blood pressure was okay. I, I got too excited and upset with her. And I shouldn't have done that, but I guess if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have made a video, huh? <laughs> but anyway, oh, remember being your good thoughts. And it just, you know, we we have to walk it together or walk it out. Y'all can invite me on your path for a little while. And you get on the path with me for a little while, but there are some roads that I can take, and it's the road less travel because it's my path, and your road is the road less travel because there ain't enough room for for people on it. I'm going to say good night, guys. Talk to you next time. Bye.